please stand, if you are able to, for the call to worship. Friends, the tomb is empty. The stone has been rolled away. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. For three days, he lay in that cold and lowly cave. For God's love cannot be contained by anything, not even in death. Thanks be to God, who gives us victory throughout our risen Lord. Death has been swallowed up. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Come, let us worship the risen Christ. Please join us in singing hymn number 302 uh, in the United Methodist Hymnal. Christ the Lord is risen today. Seated. What would you do different? Nothing. The Old Testament reading is taken from Psalm 118, verses 1 to 2 and 14 to 24. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, God's steadfast love endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. 
there are glad songs of victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord has punished me severely, but he did not give me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, and to the Son, and to the, and to the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. I want to invite the children to come up for a children's lesson, and you're going to come up one, two, three stairs and sit right here. Any children who would like to come up, come on up going to sit right up here and we're going to turn and face this way the, uh, okay now uh, uh, bring your bodies up here come on Stephen turn and face this way come on sit right up in here yeah it's safe it's safe I, I spend a lot of time up here it's really okay okay so oh, thank you <clears throat> I just want to mention that uh, Cody just said uh, he liked the cross that we decorated, and I want to say that the ladies who are part of Flowers in Praise, they did all of that work. They made these beautiful flower arrangements and the cross so that we could celebrate Easter and just be so happy to be here. So we want to thank those ladies on Flowers in Praise. Okay, i got one more thing I've got to bring over here. Well, I look like I'm having a magic show, right? I've got all this. No, not at all. Well, today is Easter, and today is a day that's full of surprises. Some of you were... Yes, I am wearing white. That's right. And I'm wearing a white stole because it's Easter. Yeah. I see a lot. Let me just take a good look at all of you. Mm. You look good today. Yes, yes. That's right. And I see lots of other beautiful colors. I see sort of a peach color. Yeah. Okay. So let me, get, let me get started on this. this. I have a, an egg carton here, and I have some eggs in it. Now, uh, the, first egg I, the first egg I want to show you, I'm actually about to fall off this step. first egg I'm going to show you is this one. Now, what do you think? It's a white egg. What do you think is on the inside of this egg? A yolk, somebody said. What do you think? Do you think it's wet or dry? I don't know. Let's crack it and see. Whoop. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No. That's it. Now, if you cook with your mommy or daddy, you might crack eggs with them. How many of you have ever cracked an egg? Raise your hand. That's right. Well, I like them when they're cooked. And I work like this, but I probably wouldn't have much to do with it. But I've got another egg here. Now, let's see. This is, um, oh, here, this egg I want to show you. Now, this is not a white egg. It's a blue egg. What do you think is on the inside? Do you think it's yucky? What do you think? Yucky. What do you think? You think it's yucky? Well, it might be a surprise. I'm going to crack it. Let's see. Well, one that? Oh, that one I, I can't crack the way I did the other one. I'm just having to crack it all over. So let me, I'm going to peel it. Oh. Yes. I uh, it's Abigail, right? Abigail said, yeah, it's a hard, oh my goodness, this one got, uh, obviously the, uh, the dye went right through. Now, when I was a little girl, and you probably did this too, you dyed eggs at home, and we, we would hide these eggs out in the yard, and they'd get all dirty and everything, and then when we'd be finished, we would just peel them and eat them, just like that. We loved them. But I'm not going to eat this one now because I don't have one to share with everybody, so I'm not going to do that. 
So I've got another egg. Let's see. I'll pull out another blue one. Now this one, what do you think? What do you think it's like on the inside? Somebody says, he, do you think it's dry or wet? Would you be willing to let me crack it over your head? Now, oh, oh. No, I'm not going to crack it over anybody's head because I did that at preschool last week and I scared somebody. So let's see what's in this egg. It won't crack. Oh, I'm going to have to try another one. Oh, let's see if this one will crack. Oh, yeah, that one cracked. Oh, yeah. What's it called? Is it called a cascarone? Yes, see, it is called a cascarone. That was a surprise, wasn't it? Woohoo! Now, now I did, let me tell you why I did all that. Yeah, it's confetti, that's right. Now, the reason I did that, and this is the part I want you to listen to very carefully. I'm not going to read the whole book, but today is Easter, and Easter is a day of surprises. And let me just tell you, on the first Easter, Abigail, and it, 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 let me tell you what happened. There were some ladies that went to the tomb. This is how people were buried back in Jesus' day. They were put inside this cave, and a stone was rolled away, and, and rolled over it. And they went to the tomb, and they were surprised because what? Jesus wasn't there. That's right. That was the surprise. And so they were so surprised that they ran back and they told the other disciples. They told Peter, and Peter ran back and look at him. Does he look surprised? Yeah. Yeah, look at his face. Like, whoa, what has happened? And Stephen, they don't know where Jesus is at that point. But guess what? Later on in the day, these are the disciples, and they see Jesus. They see him. And he looks different, but he's alive. And he even shows him the hands, the scars on his hands, but he is alive. And that's what we celebrate for, as the surprise of Easter. Yes, and we celebrate that Jesus is alive. All righty. Jesus is alive right now. Right? <laughs> I'll be talking about that. And I want you to listen when Mr. Uh, De Silva reads the story from the Gospel of Luke. He's going to do that next. Well, let's say a prayer. Can you put your hands together? Can you close your eyes if you're not afraid to do so? If you're afraid to do so, just look down. That's okay. But then don't close your eyes. Dear God, thank you for the surprise of Easter. Thank you for these boys and girls. And may they all know that you are alive and you are with them every day. Amen. Good praying. Okay, you guys can go back to your seats. Oh, wait, I've got another surprise. Um, but but you, as, as I give it to you, you can go back to your seat. Some because we all need more sugar. <laughs> Moms and dads, you can thank me later. Would you? <laughs> it's a surprise. I don't know. That's a good question. I'll have to check that one up. That's a good question. Well, I do have a blue one. Well, hi there. There you go. Oh, there you go. See? I'm not forgetting you. No, no, no. There you go. Here you go. Gosh. Oh, did I miss you? I take all the whole thing, too. I'm so sorry. Right, Simon, sorry about that. Mommy got one for you. Sorry, dear. Okay.
Please be seated. The New Testament reading is taken from Luke chapter 24, verses 1 to 12. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But they, when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words. And returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen clothes by themselves. Then he went home, amazed at what had happened. This is the good news of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. I want to stand for this one. Halle, halle, halle. the gospel. Have a seat. <clears throat> Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Read this story about a bank in Binghamton, New York who sent some flowers to a competitor, another bank, who had expanded their business and they were moving into a, a new building. And there was a mix-up at the flower shop and the card that was sent to the bank with the arrangement said, with our deepest sympathy. <laughs> now you know the florist was really embarrassed and he apologized all over himself for the mistake. But it was about halfway through the day when he realized with horror that at a funeral across town somebody was opening a card that said, congratulations on your new location. <laughs> Sometimes we don't get what we expect, right? We don't get what we expect. The women who visit Jesus' tomb are prepared to receive the sympathy of the world because of their deep grief. After all, these women had been with Jesus since the beginning of his ministry, back in Galilee. They were the ones who traveled with him, and they must have had some money of their own because they provided for Jesus and the other disciples out of their means. They made the mission possible. But now Jesus is dead, and they are they're bereft. However, instead of receiving a message of sympathy when they go to the tomb, they receive a message that Jesus is not there. Uh, he's moved to uh, a new location. He's risen, and now he's present everywhere and at all times and all places among the living. And they wonder, how can it be? You see, when Jesus dies, they are there at the cross. They are there when Joseph takes his body down from the cross and wraps it in linen and carries it to a tomb nearby and places it in a stone-cold tomb. Jesus is dead. There's no denying it. 
And they cannot do what they would normally do, which is prepare his body for burial right then because it's Friday and the sun is about to go down so that the Sabbath begins. So these women and Joseph, these women walk away from their Lord to the place where they're staying. And they prepare the spices that they'll need and they wait. And early on Sunday, they rise and they, they go to the tomb carrying the spices with them. And as they walk along the way in the new morning light, I wonder, did they share stories about Jesus, things that they remembered? Did they whisper to each other, have courage, sister? What did they do as they made that long trip to the tomb to perform this last loving act for their master and their friend. The reality they encounter at the tomb is not the reality they expect. First of all, the tomb's already open, and when they walk inside, they don't even see Jesus' body, right? And so uh, they're, they're not afraid at this point. They're just puzzled. What's going on here, they wonder. At least they aren't afraid until those two heavenly beings show up, those shining clothes, and, and they're standing right beside them. And then these women are truly, truly terrified. They throw themselves down. They put their face to the stone. These dazzling creatures say to the women, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He's not here. He has been raised. Don't you remember? Don't you remember what he said to you back in Galilee, that he would be handed over uh, to sinners and crucified and then rise after three days? And then they remember. They remember, and they're no longer afraid. They're really just beside themselves with joy, and they go running back to where the other disciples are. And you can imagine that they burst into the room, and they're talking over each other and trying to see what, say what they saw and heard just to share the news and they don't wait for permission. They don't wait to kind of read the room, to gauge the mood of the place. They don't, uh, they don't uh, worry whether others will believe them or not. They just tell the good news as they know it. He is alive. We saw angels, and they reminded us of what Jesus said back in Galilee. Do you all remember? And, and, and they, he tried to tell us more than once what happened. How could we have forgotten what he said. But even with this fervent witness from these women who are so totally convinced, the 11 disciples and the others don't believe. They think it's uh, an idle tale. Just a bunch of hysterical women, maybe. But it's not only that they forgot what Jesus said, they forgot for those days while he was in the tomb, the very nature of God, the God that they had worshipped their whole life, a God that is always on the move in the world, always doing that new and unexpected thing. After all, God's spirit moved over the void, right? And God created the stars and the planets and our earth and all that is on the earth and even humanity. God moved to form a nation. He found a wandering Aramaean called Abraham, and he said, I'm going to make a nation from you and your wife. God moved ahead of the people of Israel when they were leaving slavery in Egypt and to guide them. And when they got to that sea and they couldn't cross and the Egyptians were hot on their tail, oh my goodness, they, God moved the sea aside so they could walk through. God moved to earth in the person of Jesus Christ. That's really what we believe, right? That God, Jesus is God with us, or Emmanuel. And so, knowing that, it shouldn't be so surprising that after two long nights in the tomb, God raised Jesus from the dead so that now Christ is moving about the world, unrestricted by place or time. Christ is on the move that same day that the women go to the tomb. Uh, 
the story that follows in Luke is really one of my favorites in the whole gospel, all four of the gospels. There are two people, two of his followers, who are on the way out of Jerusalem. They're just leaving because, you know, they're grieved at Jesus' death. They don't believe what the women told them. They're just brokenhearted. And so they just start heading out. And they're walking along, and suddenly a stranger comes along beside them and joins them, right? And they explain what's happened, why they're so downcast. And the stranger then starts kind of explaining the scriptures to them, right? And, and they think, hmm, our hearts feel warm, but they still, they still don't know who this stranger is. And when they get to where they're going, they go inside. They say, come on in. Come on in and sup with us. And so... Uh, the, the stranger goes in, and they invite him to, to bless and break the bread. And it's when the bread is broken and blessed that their eyes are opened, and they know this is Jesus. And then he's on the move again. He's out of there. Jesus is gone, going to other places. And the men, oh my goodness, they're so moved that they leave that supper behind. They run back to Jerusalem, and they tell the disciples, oh, oh, we've seen the Lord. He is alive. And by that time, Jesus had already moved around and, and appeared to other people as well. Now, here's the thing. God is still moving God is still moving in the world today. But sometimes like the women at the tomb or those men walking away from Jerusalem, we're, we're not expecting to see anything new. We're overwhelmed by the death of a loved one, and we're not sure how we're going to go on. We're in the throes of our own addiction or someone else's as, as we watch the person we love, and we don't know how we're going to escape. We receive a frightening diagnosis, and suddenly all we can think about is the tomb. We fail at something, maybe more than once. Oh, and we wonder if we'll ever, ever do anything right. And it's not just our personal problems, is it? We... Oh my goodness, I hear people say this probably every day. What's the world coming to? We look around and we, we see the state of our world. We worry about the political discourse that's happening in our own country. We, uh, we worry about our economy right now. Uh, we look around and we see the political unrest and wars around the world. So there's real trouble in the world and it, it cannot be denied. It cannot be denied. And it's easy and even understandable that sometimes we, too, fall into the trap of seeing only the tomb, only death. I've been there. I wonder if any of you have. Yet the message of Easter that we proclaim today is that when all hope seems lost, God can still do a new thing in your life and my life and in the world around us. God raises Jesus from the dead, defeating the powers of hell and death. In our funeral liturgy, it says, Behold, I am alive, and I hold the keys of hell and death. I'm glad Jesus is locking all that up, right? The resurrection calls us to look away from the tomb, to look away from death-dealing circumstances and look to God, look toward God who's still moving in this world, toward Christ who is everywhere, everywhere. And so we pray that with the help of the Holy Spirit, and folks, we need the Holy Spirit to help us do this, that God will open our eyes to see God's work in the world where uh, things are happening uh, that are contributing to the goodness and the mercy and the justice of the world. And not only to see it, but empowered by the Holy Spirit to join God in that work. To put our movement behind and with the movement of God and Christ. And those of us who've met Christ and who've participated in God's life-giving work, well, we're called to join those women 
and those men and all the people who saw Jesus to tell about it, to tell about it. And we don't have to be afraid. Uh, uh, we don't have to be afraid. We don't have to worry about whether people are going to believe us or not. We don't have to read the room, you know, and check for the disapproving looks on people's faces. You just have to tell what you've seen. Tell what you've seen and leave the results in God's hands. And so today, it's not only my prayer that you feel the joy of the resurrection, but also that you know that you, you are called as witnesses to God's resurrecting work in the world. I offer these words to you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of the bright and morning star, God of the rising sun, God of darkness banished, we praise and worship you. For empty tombs, thank you. For disciples running with good news, thank you. For your presence alive and powerful and resurrected, Thank you. We celebrate your victory over death over all the powers of the world that would defeat us. For the gift of our lives, we thank you. And especially today, we remember those who are celebrating another year of life, Julian, Jane, Marjorie, and Luke. Help us to grasp, O oh Lord, this gift of life, this resurrection, to understand its power, to see its force at work in the world, overturning evil and changing the hatred within us, and moving the world slowly and forcefully, bending towards love and justice and truth. On this day of great gladness, empower us to be your witnesses, proclaiming good news as readily as those women on Easter morn. Good news in our kitchens and living rooms. Good news in our offices and workshops. Good news in the fields and factories. Help us to be that good news, walking softly on this good earth and caring gently for all people, living hopefully into your kingdom. Today we pray for those who are perhaps standing at a tomb and grieving, especially Vonnie and Andy. We pray for the sick, especially Bruce, Elizabeth, Linda, George, Fran Fleming, Dave, Janice, and Libby. And we also pray for all the caregivers. We pray for the people of Ukraine and all the places torn by war and bloodshed. We pray for the people of Sri Lanka and all countries in political turmoil due to the lack of just basic necessities of life. And Lord, in this world of broken hopes and dreams, give us a vision of Christ resurrected, of your kingdom come in the person of Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever. Amen.
this table is not my table or your table. It's not a, a table reserved for those who belong or for those who measure up. It's not for church members with seniority either or for those who believe the right things or even live the right ways. It's the Lord's table. And it's set for all who are hungry. It's for all who need a place to belong. It is for celebrating our, our uh, common humanity as well as our marvelous diversity. It's the Lord's table. And Christ is our hope. We are the lucky guest. All are welcome here. Christ is risen, and we have risen to new life with him. Yet we must confess the ways that we have continued to remain in our tombs of sin and death. Will you join me in the prayer of confession? Living Lord, when we stand before the empty tomb, we don't always feel the joy of resurrection. We feel fear, doubt, and distrust. We feel empty. Forgive the fear that paralyzes us at the brink of new life. Forgive our doubt of your love. Forgive our distrust of your surprising, joyous plan. Fill our emptiness with your glorious light. Raise us to abundant new life in the glory of your name. Wake up, sleeper. Rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Sisters and brothers, Christ has forgiven all our sins. Christ calls us to new life. Christ will lead us into righteousness. And now, as a forgiven and a reconciled people, I invite you just to stand where you are and to turn to the people who are around you and to wish them the peace of Christ. Oh, peace of Christ be with all of you. Uh, just have a seat, and I, I want to remind you about the Easter offering, that if you have those envelopes, all of that's going to Ukraine or to give you them to eat, which is our mission. Uh, we have a connection with the missionary there. That's a, a program designed to help people uh, really uh, empower them. The, the, those missionaries there are trying to work themselves out of a job, too. So anyway, thank you for your generosity. Uh, you can give a lot of ways. You can give online. You can give uh, if you have cash or a check. And um, so I invite you to do so. And, and again, thank you for your generosity. Let's continue with worship.
I invite you to join me in the prayer of great thanksgiving. The, the uh, responses are in your bulletin. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. By your great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of your Son from the dead and to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Once we were no people, but now we are your people, declaring your wonderful deeds in Christ, who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. On the day you raised him from the dead, he was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of the bread and in the power of your Holy Spirit. Your church has continued in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. As we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one in Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now, rejoicing in the resurrection and new life that is ours, as our Savior taught us, so now we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. And the cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ.
Just a word about how we'll receive communion today. We're going to do this by intention. You're invited to come forward as directed by the ushers. And, and I will give you a wafer, and then you can dip it into one of the cups that is here. And uh, many people in the church like to stop and pray at the rails, and they are there for you to do that. And you will not be alone if you decide to do it, so don't be afraid of that. Um, and if you need communion brought to you, just raise your hand, and one of the ushers will, will bring it right to you. If you, don't feel, if you don't want to come forward or you just feel like it would be too difficult, that's up to you. And so now the table is set, and I invite you to come.
Please stand for the prayer after receiving. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into this world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves to others in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please remain standing for the closing hymn, the United Methodist Hymnal, hymn 310, He Lives. the loving power of God which raised Jesus to new life strengthen you in hope, enrich you with his love, and fill you with joy in the faith. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Let me just remind you there are some goodies uh, out here somewhere. Follow your nose and, and stay and have a little bite and a little visitation. God bless you. Amen.